Hallelujah. You guys, awesome. Uh, I just want to, first of all, start. We're, we're in a series right now uh, called Let the Chains Fall. That's and uh, we've been doing a lot, of, a lot of really cool stuff. A couple of weeks ago, we, we, the mall had a movie night. They showed, um, what's the name of that movie they showed? Um, the Secret Life of Pets. And there was like 400 people that showed up. And our church was there handing out free water. And, uh, and we've gone. And, and Michael uh, went and played at Letourneau at their big... Uh, uh, Revive Conference at Laterno that the students have. He played there. Uh, Pastor John and I went and joined another youth group uh, and played for them and, and blessed them. So we're definitely getting out of these out of these walls. Uh, we're we're uh, gearing up again to go back to Rahab's retreat. Marissa's heading that up, and 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 uh, we've just done some really really neat things and and had a lot of response from people that just want to know God. They just want to see um, that see the love of Christ on on people. And and um, and last night the mall had had an event at the main entrance of the mall where it was, uh, it was Fall Fest and they had bands and things like that. And we went to hand out free water again and we changed courses real quick because we looked at the weather and it was, it was supposed to be you know, like two degrees outside last night. And uh, so I'm like, gosh, is, is free water going to go over? Does anybody want water? You know, and so we switched real quick and made free hot chocolate for everybody. So brought out the propane and the turkey fryer. And, and, and instead of oil in the turkey, we just had water boiling. And we just all night long just gave people hot chocolate. And, uh, and all the hot chocolate got drank. And we brought all the waters that we had made, put labels around, all the, brought them back and the church because nobody wanted the water but uh but we made a lot of really good connections and so anytime you get an opportunity to do something outside of yourself anytime whether it's with this church or or if you have a home church or uh or or at your workplace or whatever anytime god's tugging on your heart to reach out to somebody with a smile with a good heart and show them what what true christianity is what what it really means to be a christian um, is, is not legalistic and religion. It's relationships and smiles and handshakes and hugs and, you know, and, and uh, going and playing softball with your buddies and, and, uh, and going bowling if somebody still bowls. Uh, uh, please, I hope nobody bowls in here. That's the most ridiculous sport. Oh, I'm just kidding, man. Okay, all right. Uh, I love Jim Gaffigan's take on that. He's like, nobody's ever proud of going bowling. Nobody's ever like, you know what, let's go bowl. And everybody's always like, you know, what would be hysterical? If we all went bowling, <laughs> so he said, if you have, uh, if you own your own bowling shoes and your own bowling ball, you have no friends. So, <laughs> dad owns his ball and his shoes and everything, uh, and he has lots of friends. So I stand corrected. So today's today's sermon is definitely it's let the chains fall, but it's part two. So it's. Break the chains of misguided prayer. The chain you don't even know is there. That's the title uh, of, the, of the sermon today because w there's a chain that sometimes gets on us that we're not even sure that it's there, which is brilliant uh, of the enemy. There is a, there's a good and, a, and an evil. There's a light and a dark. There's a God and there's a devil. And there's a heaven and there's a hell. And the devil's greatest weapon is convincing us that he's not there, that we got it going on, and we don't have to worry about it, that we're doing good. That's the greatest weapon that he's got. And I always go back to the scripture in Matthew that says uh, that even though you call me Lord, um, just because you call me Lord, some, some of y'all will not, will not see the kingdom of heaven. And it always makes me check myself. Always. I'm like, gosh, I, you know, I... I, I uh, lay hands on people and cast out it says you cast out demons in my name but God we we did this in your name and we did this in your name but I never knew you scripture says so you know so it always makes me you know keep that keep that in in check and and if there are if the greatest weapon uh, that the devil has is 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 convincing us that he's not there you know then I always want to make sure like okay let me make sure that because if I think all is good sometimes all is good but sometimes we can get on the on the wrong track in the wrong path and we're not even sure that we're on it so we're going to keep this going about about chains and I, I wanted to start off by reading in acts all right so if you have your bibles with you get them out if Acts 16 turn to 22 this is where paul and silas are imprisoned and shackled all right let's read the crowd joined in the attack against paul and silas and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods after they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. 
When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself! We're all here! The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and felt trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Just believe in the Lord Jesus, and you'll be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them, washed them, washed all their wounds. Then immediately he and his household were baptized. The jailer took them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his entire household. What a powerful, powerful story. And I started off reading that story because if we take a look at that story, Paul and Silas were Jews. They were hated. They were, they were hated for what they believe in and what they do. They were not just criticized, but severely persecuted. They were beaten. And they were flogged. They were put in prison and, and chained, actually chained. And... Every fleshly part of us, if you'll think about it, put yourself in those shoes. Don't just read the Bible as, oh, this is a story, I've heard that, and that happened a long, long time ago, and it's not really relevant. It's re these are real people, real guys that were doing good work, just like you. People that have families and love in their hearts and, and love people, and they go around, and they're, you know, they're church folks. They're good Christian people. And someone beat them and flogged them. Think if someone did that to you beat you and flogged you, put you in prison and put you in, in shackles and you're bleeding, you have wounds, you've been spit on and cussed at. And now you go to your God because that's what you're trained to do. You go to your God. But how many of us would pray, oh God, set me free from this. Please change the hearts of the jailers. Let them, let them take mercy on me. Let them take pity on me. May I, may I just be freed, Father God. Show me how to get out of here what have I done? To, we would pray like that. We would pray to change the situation and probably have a few choice words for the jailers in our prayer. I don't know if y'all have ever prayed like that before. <laughs> I have. <laughs> right? Oh, Father God, please take his life. Make him die. No, I'm kidding. I haven't, haven't ever prayed that. But, uh, but, but, you know, we do sometimes, you know, Father God, I pray that you set them straight. Have you ever prayed that? You don't have to raise your hand, but I have. <laughs> You know, set them straight. They're wrong. They're ugly. They've been mean. You know, set them straight. But instead, Paul and Silas, it says, they prayed and sang. They just worshiped God. No point did they blast these people. At no point did they say, did they say, get away from me, Satan. You are trying to steal my joy and steal my heart. At no point, they just simply prayed and sang to God. They kept their eyes on the Lord and just worshiped God. And then, when they did that, the earth shook and the chains were broken and fell. And that's not the end of the story. The jailers were so impressed with this, he was immediately converted. He was immediately like, show me how I can be saved. How can I have what you have? Because you just displayed to me something I've never seen before and is unprecedented and doesn't even make sense that you would do this under these circumstances. And so how can I be saved? And they just said, well, it's simple. Just trust in the Lord and this and that. You and your household will be saved. Not only did he get saved, not only did he allow them to get out of prison, he actually took them and cleaned up their wounds. Then he made a dinner for them. And then not just them, but their entire household would, were, was saved. How many of you would love to see your entire household, all of your relatives, all your aunts and uncles, all your cousins, to have 
peace among all your families. Amen. To have, to have comfort, to have strength, to have power. How many of you would love to see peace reign in your families? I mean, I think we all would. How do we get it? How do we get it? How do we, how do we, how do we pray correctly? How do we get on track, even with our prayers? So, if, if I say, how do we pray correctly, that means, that, that kind of indicates there's a wrong way to pray. Is there a wrong way to pray? Yeah, sure is. And we're going to talk about it, all right? There is a wrong way to pray. Okay, if there wasn't a wrong way to pray, Jesus would not have said, the, 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 the disciples would not have said, he taught us to pray, saying, one of the most famous prayers in history, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Okay, and on and on. I mean, we could say it if you don't want to say it. Um, but, yeah, he taught us to pray. That means they must have been doing it wrong. If they needed taught, if you have to teach someone, it indicates that there is a wrong way to do it. And, and I will challenge that we do it wrong all the time. And we're just going to shift just slightly. Because he did teach us to pray. Our Father, so first things first, he is not teaching us to pray. Uh, you, you see this person over here that did us wrong? He's not teaching us to pray, God, my wife. He's not teaching us to pray, if my boyfriend would only, Father God, you know his heart. And it's ugly. Uh, he's not teaching us to pray like that. He's not teaching us, God, it, it, you know that alcohol is, is in my family and reigns supreme. God, I'm going to speak to that alcohol and I'm going to command it to move. That's not how he taught us to pray. That doesn't mean when I, I'm going to go into this. That doesn't mean we never pray like that. Don't hear what I'm not saying and, and, and put words in my mouth. We'll cover that too. But it, it's, there is a time and place to, to speak to the mountain. He did tell us that too. You know, but... I'm just going to get us to think just a little bit differently today and shift, shift our, our, our prayer because sometimes when our chains fall off, we pick them back up before we walk out of that door. Okay? Um, so he did. He taught us to pray saying, Our Father who art in heaven, you're acknowledging he's above everything else in your life. Hallowed be thy name. Holy. Holy are you. He's, you're coming to God with your, this. Let me put myself in, in, in check. You're in charge. You're in heaven, not me. Holy are you. That's how you start. That alone will shift our perspective. That alone. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. I mean, if we just stopped there, I, I want God's will to be done in my life. Not my will, but how many times do we pray for what we want? And I want it this way. Please heal this. Please mend that. Please help my finances. Please, I'm not saying again that we shouldn't ever pray like that. However, I think sometimes we should dig into this other type of prayer a little bit more, all right? So sometimes why isn't my prayer working um, can be, you know, what we're kind of being confused about. Um, and it's because of this kind of stuff. So if we'll turn to Luke, Luke 22, okay? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, okay? Luke, Luke 22, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Luke 22... 42, and we'll go through uh, just 42 and 43. All right. Luke 22, 42. Okay, this is when Jesus is praying in the garden. This is how he prays. So if we want to figure out how, how do we really pray correctly, how did Jesus pray? All right. Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. So what that means is... Um, I have a mission and I'm supposed to go die. He's praying in the garden right before he gets arrested and he knows he's going to be crucified and he's about to be slain. And he doesn't want to be slain. He doesn't want to be beaten. He doesn't really want to. He, so he's actually saying, I don't, I don't want to go through this. So Father, if you're willing, please set me free from this. He's break the chains that I have to go through. I, I mean, we pray that all the time. We pray, God, save me from this. Release me from this. I don't know. Have y'all ever been hurt? I have. I've been hurt before and had a scar on my heart, hit my knees through tears, prayer after prayer after prayer. God, take this from me. Have you ever prayed that? Take this from me. Have you ever prayed that and you woke up with it the next day? 
and he prayed again. He woke up with it the next day, prayed again. He woke up with it the next day, and it went on and on and on. And he never took it from you? Me too. I've had that happen. But he finally took it from me. It's gone. And it wasn't because I hit my knees and asked him to take it from me. It's because I shifted my prayer. And when I did, it immediately released. I was amazed. I was like, that is crazy how that, how that happened. When I shifted my prayer, when I quit asking for it, he's, he's so crafty, right? When I quit asking for it, that's when, oh my goodness. It's because it, it all boils down to trust, what we're really putting our faith in and trust in, in, in the Father. So, Father, he says, if you are willing, please take this cup from me. However, not my will, but yours be done. So he's just basically just submitting. Yours be done. And an angel appeared from heaven and gave him strength. That is phenomenal. Can we do that? He says, your will be done. And then what happens is, God did not change his situation. But instead, gave him strength to endure his situation. Because had he removed Jesus from the situation, God's purpose would not have ever been fulfilled. We wouldn't be here right now. Isn't that incredible? We oftentimes pray that God would change a situation. As a matter of fact, I'd probably say that leads the, leads the way when we pray. For God to change something that we want. You know, God help me get into this class that I want to take. God help my finances. God help my marriage. Um, my children, please help them. God, uh, what, whatever it might be. Get me out of this situation. I don't want to be here. But instead, we just saw three men of the Bible, Paul, Silas, and Jesus Christ himself, not praying like that at all, and they were to be set free. And, and Jesus went ahead and endured. And is Jesus set free? Is he? Is Jesus set free? Yeah. Did God set Jesus free? And through that, was it only Jesus that got set free? No. Paul and Silas, did God set them free? Yeah. And through their obedience and just faith to endure whatever, were they the only ones that God set free that night? You see how that, isn't that amazing? Like, he's going to set you free. But he's not just interested in helping your finances. He's not just interested in, in your husband stopping you fill in the blank, whatever that jerk is doing. And vice versa. Can I get an amen, man? Right, 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 fellas? Women are crazy. All right? Father God, please heal her crazy. <laughs> and I know you're bigger than everything. I don't think it's possible, but heal her mama's crazy too. <laughs> I don't know if your God is that big. I don't know if he's that big. Just kidding. Yes, he is. And I'm just kidding anyway. Everyone's mother is wonderful. All right. All right. So... When Jesus, when Jesus prayed this, he did not pray against the Roman soldiers. God, strike them down. Put up a shield around me. He didn't pray for his will. He just prayed, God, I don't want to go through it, but I will do it because your will be done, not mine. How many times do we ever pray that? Seriously, do we honestly put our trust and faith in however God wants it to be, not our way? Father God, if you could just, could you make him blah, 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 blah. Instead, God, give me the strength to endure because I am your child and I want to grow to know you better and be the strongest woman I can be. Be the strongest man that I can be. Give me the strength to take another step. Give me the words to say that will heal people, that will light up the world wherever I go. Or are we so consumed that we can't get past praying for just our stuff? A couple weeks ago, I, I challenged you guys to give, give, I challenge you all the time to make God Lord of your life. Lord of your life means he's the one that's in control of your life. And most of us have done that. He's Lord over our family. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He's Lord of our homes. Most of us, he's Lord of our finances. You know, um, he's, he's Lord of, 
of this. Is he also Lord of your perspective? Is he also Lord of your mind? Or does your mind still run wild? Do you still pray for things just in your perspective? Or are you praying from God's perspective? Is God also Lord? All right. Is God also Lord of his word? Or are you Lord of his word? Let that marinate for a minute. This is his word, and it is amazing. But oftentimes we use his word through our power. We take, we take scriptures and, and, and use them for however we see that it should go. We take the very power out of prayer when we pray for God to change a situation that we want instead of just saying, God, have your way. If this is how you want the situation to be, then give me the strength to endure it. And I'm going to trust you. When we pray for, for specific things to change or someone's mindset to change, change his mind, change her heart. When we pray for that, are we taking the very power out of prayer? Because we're praying that our will would be done. Are we really dis displaying a trust in God when we ask God to make something be the way we want it to be? I challenge that sometimes we are taking the very power out of prayer when we pray God to change instead of just pray that His will be done. When we do that... We're praying for our will to be done in the very scriptures, in our very prayer to conquer. We're putting zero trust in God. We'll trust God if he delivers us from the prayer. Or, if, you know, if he answers our prayer, we trust him. You know, me and my, me and my kid are, are having, having conflict. I mean, we're not, but, you know, me and my kid having conflict. You know, like, I want him to, to go to this college, you know, where God goes to school. <laughs> I saw somebody walk in with an A&M sweatshirt on today. Uh, <laughs> Kate. All right. uh, so, you know, y'all are probably having the same feud then, you know. Uh, and your family, you know, like your kid wants to go, you know, in the middle of the devil's den in Bryan College Station where, where evil rules. And uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, actually... Where evil rules is a little north of Texas called OU. Uh, but that's, you know, A&M is still in Texas. So, you know, I'll give a whoop every once in a while. If, uh, but if we're having feuds about his, his career, his dreams, what I think his path should be versus his, you know, he thinks it's just a common teenage problem with dads, you know. And I pray God change his heart. Let him see that that's not the best for him. I am praying that what I think is best for my kid is what you should do, God. Am I trusting that God is going to provide him and change his heart? Am I trusting God with my child? I don't think so. I'm, I, I'm trusting God if God answers my prayer. And if rain comes in the next morning going, Dad, you know what? You were right. You are always right. <laughs> and I'm like... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that's right. I trust you. I trust you because you answered my prayers. But oftentimes if we pray for a situation to change and God doesn't change it, it confuses us even to the point of, do we trust him? Maybe it even it challenges your trust in God. And it's not God that did anything wrong. I, I'm, I just, I'm going to challenge all of us to pray the way that, if you don't want the change to fall in your life, Look no further than, than how they prayed in the Bible. When Paul and Silas were chained, literal chains. That's worse than any of our situations. Whatever you're going through, that's worse. All right? They were beaten. I mean, no one in here has been beaten in the last week. All right? And flogged. <laughs> Who's ever been flogged? No one's been flogged, you know? And, and then shackled and thrown into prison. Like, come on. And they just prayed and sang songs. That'd be hard to do. 
I ask you, in your situation, whatever your situation might be, some of y'all might have come to church today and you don't really have a situation. Awesome. A lot of you came to church today that's got something going on. And I ask you, can you, even in your situation, can you just pray to God what God wants for you in your life, how He would want you to grow His kingdom outside of your problems, and just sing and worship God without praying towards this particular thing? That's having faith and trust in God. God, I give you this. How many times have we said, God, I lay it at your feet, I lay it at your altar, I give you this. God, change his heart. God, um, make, did you give it to him? Sometimes we pray like that and we walk away feeling like we've done something. We walk away feeling like, yeah, I just threw it down. Just threw it down. Um, and, and, you know, I prayed for this and that. I prayed for Satan to get out of my life. I prayed, you know, I speak this and I speak that. And you walk away like, yeah. But you didn't, you didn't spend any time with God on you. You just, you just, Threw darts at, and I picked this up and, just, and fired off some scripture that fits your situation. And, and, and we walk away feeling like, man, I'm a prayer warrior. It is a genius plan of Satan. Satan's biggest weapon is convincing us that we're all right and he ain't there. And we did pretty good. And he, he will absolutely use what you love, which for a lot of us, what we love the most is this, this Bible. He will use what you love to infiltrate you. If you're a musical guy, musical girl, he will use music to get to infiltrate you. If if you have a soft spot for children, he will use that very thing to throw you off track. And some of us, it's the actual word of God that we love so dearly and so much. He'll actually use the word of God to throw us off track. And we walk away feeling like, man, I just that was awesome. But we never actually worked on us. We never actually Put complete faith and trust in God. His will be done, not mine. So sometimes we take scriptures out of context, you know. Are you praying? Are you using certain scriptures as ammo to fire at your foes? Like Jeremiah 29, 11 is prosperity. It talks about prosperity. So we use that scripture all the time. Father God, you, you say that, that your plans are for me to prosper to have a, my future. You want my future to be bright and prosper. So, Father God, just, just make my job explode. Um, give me finances that are unheard of. You own the cattle on a thousand hills, so my bank account ought to explode any day now. And Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, give you hope for prosperity is mine. And you, you just take that and you throw it at it. You just take the scripture. Just, I'm just going to grab that. I'm not going to read all Jeremiah. I'm just going to take that one. And, just whoosh, and I'm going to fire it. And then you walk away feeling like, yes. And then when your bank account doesn't blow up, when you don't get the promotion, you're like, God, what, where, you just let the devil take God's power out of his word. Because you didn't, you didn't pray right. You didn't read the whole thing. You just, you just fired off a dart at it. And another one, sometimes we pray for Satan to leave us alone. God gave me this word just this last week, and I was like, that's a good word, man. And I saw that word work, and I saw that word produce freedom. So I was like, I need to share that word. That sometimes we pray, we pray to Satan. I don't pray to Satan, um, but we pray at, we, we speak to Satan. And I mean, I'm not saying you shouldn't. Um, it, God says, speak to the problem, speak to the mountain. Don't pray, Father God, please remove the sickness, or Father God, please move the mountain. The Bible actually says, speak to the mountain, just speak to it. And so we can speak to Satan. And Jesus did, get thee behind me, Satan, like he's talking to Satan. You know, so we can get thee behind me, Satan. We can speak to Satan. Satan, you cannot have, you have no rule in here. You have no place in, in authority in my life or in my child, or you get out of here in the name of Jesus. I command you to flee. Now, that's a great prayer. I'm not saying don't pray that, man. That's some powerful prayer. And we'll see in a minute when Jesus did that. Yes, he did pray that. But then, then what did he do after that? Because oftentimes we don't do the, what did he do after that? We just go, Satan, move, remove yourself from this situation. And we blast it out. Bam, 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 bam. We do some battle. And Satan, you have no authority on it. Amen. And you never worked on you. You walk on to the next thing, and you 
You go right, right back into taking Scripture and just firing them out for what you will. You never actually sink in and, and, and strengthen your relationship with God. Oh, Satan is so happy that you just cursed him. It had no power whatsoever. Because you're the one that has something in your heart that needs to strengthen you need to give God even your own perspective. We still are trying to just speak what we want. Satan, you have no control over my home, over my marriage. You have no control over my child, over my job, whatever it is. Amen. And then, and then, then you continue to pray for God, change my husband. Change my child. Change my job situation. Change my career. But you never actually hit your knees and say, God, I want whatever you want. If you don't do that part... The blast in Satan doesn't have a lot of power because you're actually not saying it in Jesus' name. When you, even if you say in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name means you put him first. That's what his name means. It means that he is the Messiah. He's Lord of all. Well, if you don't make him Lord of all, when you say in Jesus' name, it doesn't have power. You have to actually, in his name actually means everything that his name encompasses which is first and foremost the way he taught us to pray, saying, Our God, our Father, who art in heaven, holy is your name, not my will, yours be done. Now you can pray in Jesus' name. But if you just, in Jesus' name, Satan, go, and then you just continue, you never actually submit yourself to thy will, not mine. You still are just wanting, you're still just shooting out prayers of change this situation. You never spent time in a relationship and growing your heart, growing your relationship with the Lord and putting your trust in God to do whatever He wants. Does that make sense? That's a good word. Isn't that a good word? He just gave me that this, this last week, and I really thought a lot about it. We spend so much time praying over here, but we miss the mark when what does Jesus really want for you? How does He want to change you? Sometimes the only time we read our Bible is when we're looking for something. Did, don't, don't raise your hand, but did, did that hit? Is that, that hit home with some folks? Sometimes the only time you read your Bible is, is when you're looking for something. Oh, where's that scripture that, that talks about uh, how my, my husband should honor his wife like God loves the church? Where's that one? Where's that one? Where's that one? Honey, did, did you read this? Did you read that today? Or, 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 or uh, you know, or men. Where's that scripture that says, uh, submit yourselves. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands. Uh, baby, here, could you, you know, write her a little note in the morning. Like, I want to water my wife with the word. I'm going to leave this by your coffee cup. There you go, sugar booger. That's for you. In Jesus' name. <laughs> you just used the scripture wrong. Is she going to receive that? No, you didn't water your wife. You banged her over the head with it. And you, sometimes we do... Now, that's a funny example, but we do that kind of thing all the time. And we walk away feeling like, I just did so, I feel so good about myself. And I'm just the best Christian ever. And then apply that scripture in Matthew. Even though you call me Lord, man, I don't know you. I want to know him. Paul and Silas entered into a communion with God. That's when the chains fell. All right. So where are uh, our little ones? If you usually go to children's church, but you're in here today, raise your hand. You're if younger than sixth grade, come and stand right here. And I'm going to demonstrate to you guys how sometimes we pray. All right. I'm going to... Let you guys get one ping pong ball. How many ping pong balls are you going to get? Yeah. All right. Everybody got a ping pong ball? Okay. Now then, this is what's going to happen. I'm the guy that you're praying for. And you're wanting your prayers to land on my heart. Maybe I've been drinking too much and I'm your husband and, and you're like, he doesn't treat me right. He's been drinking too much. Maybe I have, I'm not doing anything like that. Maybe I'm... Uh, you know, looking at websites and stuff that, you know, no, no guy should be looking at. Or maybe I'm, uh, you know, hanging out with the fellas too much. Maybe I just don't love you and, and you know, whatever it is. I'm spending too much time at work. I'm going to become a workaholic and I'm not spending any time with you. Whatever it is. 
I'm the guy that you're praying for. And you're really hoping that I catch your prayers, that your prayers land on me and change me. The whole point is that you want to change me. Well, if you're going to change me, the prayers have to land. They got to land. They got to hit home. I got to receive them. If no one receives that prayer, you can block God out of your life. God can have, I mean, you can choose. God tells us many times, you can choose. And here I am, you can choose to let the prayers land and you can choose to go my way or you can choose not to. What happens if you reject God and you choose, I don't want to listen to anything God says, what happens to you? You do have a horrible life and then at the end of your life, you... <laughs> Look out, right? That's exactly right. So you can choose. So who you're praying for, they don't have to receive the prayer. But we really hope that when we fire off the prayer, it hits them. And, and they catch it, and, and it lands, and it changes them. So we got all these prayers that we're not learning the whole Bible. We're not praying God's will. We're taking them, and we're firing this ammo just from all random places whenever we feel because our emotions are high. Oh, yeah, God, I remember you said this. Bam. Oh, I forgot. You said this. I declare prosperity over my life, and you said that no weapon formed against me will prosper, and bam. All right, so I'm going to fire this off in my situation. All right, so y'all are going to, not yet, on the count of three. When I count to three, you're going to throw the ping pong balls at me. Those are your prayers. (laughs) Hayden, you got way too excited. And I'm going to catch them. I'm going to catch every one of them. Yep. Okay. Here we go. On the count of three, do not throw the ping pong balls at each other. Don't throw them at the audience. Only throw them at me. And try to hit me. Okay? Is everybody ready? Yeah. One, two, not yet. (laughs) All right. Here we go. One, two, three. Okay, I, thank you. Thank you. Tyler's is the only prayer that got through that I caught. Thank you for praying for me, Tyler. Um, but that's impossible. It's impossible for me to catch all those balls, isn't it? Yeah. All right? I can't catch all of, those, all of those balls. Just the same as when we fire prayers at people like that, just randomly, bam, 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 bam. They're not going to catch them. Your prayers are going to fall like seeds on dry ground. So we're just, we're just wasting our time throwing prayers that have no power in them because they're not sent from God in His will. They're sent only because this is what we want. And so we're taking this ammo and we're just firing it. And it's not landing. We have to shift just a little bit. All right. Thank you, guys. Give the kiddos a big round of applause. Y'all can go back to your seats. <laughs> All right. So... That's what we do. When, whenever we have stuff that, that disappoints us, that's not the way my marriage was supposed to go. When we got married, God said, what God had joined together, let no man put us under. He said, that's not the way that's supposed to, that's supposed to happen. My kids don't even talk to me anymore. Well, that really hurts. God, take this pain from me. I... I Started dating a person, got too far with this person. You shouldn't have done it, but that's why you shouldn't have done it because it leaves such a scar on your heart. But regardless of that, it left you with pain. Oh, that's that's a hurtful pain, man. Take this from me. Man, Satan, you get out of my life. God, stop her from drinking. It's just gone way too far. I was really wronged. Remember that guy in school that treated me this way? I just can't get over the sickness that I, that I have in my life. These people are just being, being mean. And so you take your weapons and you're like, you know what, God? Fire off these darts. You said where two or three are gathered, there you are in my name and I will hear you where two or three are gathered. Yes. You know what, God? You said that anything that I ask in your name, it will be done. I, he said, I will give to you. You know that scripture? That's a scripture. Anything that you ask in my name, I will give to you. That's the one that I need right now. That's the one that I need. I need her to stop doing that to me. I need my kid to love me again. I need a job. 
anything asked in your name, I will give it to you. Mm, there you go. Bam. Oh, it hit. Man, I did pretty good. I threw that dart and it landed. Yes. Yes, it's going to be done. No weapon formed against me will prosper. These people are being ugly, being mean to me. You know what? That's my scripture for today. No weapon formed against me will prosper. Oh, man, they all hit. I just am the best prayer warrior ever. This is great. God is powerful. We just throw the darts. Bam, bam, bam. Those scriptures were never intended to be used as darts. Just, I'm going to choose all oh, this pain. That girl hurt my heart. Never mind that I never should have been in that relationship anyway, and God told me not to mess with that girl, but I did anyway. Oh, my goodness, that hurts. And so, God, you know what? Take this pain from me. You say we're two or three are gathered. I'm going to go get a couple of my boys, and we're going to pray. We're two or three are gathered together. There you are. You hear my prayer. Take this pain from me. Bam! Where are you now in a week when you still hurt? Where are you when you didn't get... I didn't get the job. I prayed. I didn't get the job because you took the, the darts and you just threw them... That scripture doesn't mean that. That's not what it means. It's not meant for you to just use for whatever you want. You know, where, where it says, uh, where it says, ask anything in my name and I will give it to you. I, we take that scripture just out of, just that scripture, out of, out of the Bible. We don't, we're not throwing the Bible we're not throwing the whole Bible in its context with God as the head. God, our Father, who art in heaven, holy is your name, your will. Be. That's not what we're throwing at him. We're just taking that scripture out of context. Man, I just that scripture that says uh, anything that I ask in Jesus' name, I just pluck that out of the... And I just use that, just that one. Oh, it can't be my fault that I'm in so much pain. Oh, uh, surely I don't need to spend time with God working on me. It's got to be their fault. And this scripture is going to hit them right in the eye. And you take it and you throw it. That scripture doesn't mean that. That scripture was for those people back then when God was going away. He was going back to heaven, you know, and he's like, I'm going to die, get crucified. I'm going to rise again, and then I'm going to leave you to it. I can't be here forever. I'm going to leave you to it. These people, to grow my church and build my church, you will do greater things even than me. I'm going to leave you to it. I am going away. But don't worry, I'm going to send you a comforter. That Holy Spirit is going to give you powers and strength that you have yet to even realize. And, and you are going to carry out the Great Commission. Here is my commission to you, people of this earth. Jesus said, you are to go and spread the good news of the gospel throughout all of the land. And anything that you need, let me know. I'll help you. That's what that scripture means. If you're carrying out God's great commission, if you need something, let me know. That's like if I say, Dad, I need to borrow your truck because we're building some benches in the church. And, and I got I to gotta go get some lumber. And, and Dad says, sure, no problem. And I also, uh, I, need a, I need a table saw, a ripping saw. I don't have one. Um, and Dad's like, I got a whole, whole workshop full of stuff. And he said, you know what, whatever you need, whatever you need, just ask me. I'll give it to you. Oh, what did my dad just say? Whatever I need, you, I just ask you and you give it to me? Oh, I need $500, Dad. <laughs> uh, dad, will you, will you, heal, will you t will you heal my marriage? You said, you said I could ask you and you would do it. Dad, my, my son needs to go to school this morning, and, and, and I, my car died. Um, go take him to school. Um, my, my brother is drinking too much. Hey, Dad, hey, Dad, could you go make him quit drinking? I mean, is that what that means? No. Dad said that anything that you need in the context of the mission that, you're, that I'm sending you on, it doesn't mean, hey, Dad, you say that, you, anything, you give me $500. And you're like, well, here you go. Jesus has a specific purpose for us. We get outside of that purpose, and still we pray for the Scriptures, for God to do things for us in our lives. We we're not even doing the project that He asked us to do. <laughs> you can't just fire a dart. 
and expect that, that something's going to change if you're not, you stop doing the project he asked you to do. When you came to Christ and, and, and said, I give my life to you, Lord, you bowed your heart and said, you be Lord of my life. You became a Christian, and a Christian's job is to live for more than yourself. It's a great life. It's a wonderful life. Oh, what a horrible life, just living for you and yourself and all the tragedy and stuff that comes with it. You can be set free from it today. You can make the chains fall off you today. You just have to pray and worship. And, and let them fall. And don't pick them back up. And, and well, But I need her to do this, but I need him to do this. Let them fall. Work on you. Work on you. Read the whole scriptures. Don't just read the little... Psh, read the whole thing and God might actually speak to you. And you might actually be like, oh, I'm the one. <laughs> he did that for me multiple times. God has shown me multiple times what a big pain in the rear jerk I am. Thank you, Lord. Now, I don't believe that I'm a big pain in the rear jerk anymore because he set me free from that. After hitting my knees, night after night after night, take this from me. I'm crying. This, oh my goodness, I'm so, I'm so upset. I got to put this down. I'm going to stab myself with it. All right. Uh, and he didn't take it, and he didn't take it, and he didn't take it. When he finally released me, when my chains finally fell, hit the ground, never to be picked up again, was when there was something going on in my life that took me out of myself, got my focus just on God. Unfortunately, it took a tragedy to shake me up like that when Dad was first diagnosed with this junk in his lung. It shook me. It was the biggest mountain we've ever faced in, in our lives. I have been carrying this pain from years and years and years ago, carrying it and carrying it and carrying it. Even though I was growing in the Lord and I'm a, a minister of God and, and I still had this pain and he just never, never, did, he never did take it away. Even though I asked and asked and asked and asked and asked. All right? It was when something outside of me took my focus and I had to hit my knees and spend more time with God than I've ever spent in my life. It was in those times that I spent more time with God than I've ever spent in my life. When I gave Him my time, I gave Him my perspective. I genuinely said, God, Your will be done. I wasn't even, I was no longer consumed with my pain. Got myself focused on what God wants through something way bigger. Sometimes we just have to look at, some, there's bigger stuff going on than what you've been crying about. There's bigger stuff going on that God needs your help for and help with. And that's, it took that for me. And I hit my knees. I fasted like I've never fasted before because it says, you want to move that mountain? That type of faith takes prayer and fasting. So I fasted more than I've ever fasted before, prayed like I never prayed before. And I remember the day that it happened, I wasn't even asking for it. I quit asking for it. No longer was I hitting my knees going, God, please take this from me. Or even about my career. God, I don't understand. My, you've shifted my career and I'm, it's not going the way that it, you... Well, I forget all that stuff. And I was just praying for God to do a miracle. And, and, and just show in my heart, in my family's heart, God, you're, I had to rely on God's power and be okay with whatever, God. I believe you for a miracle, but I believe you and trust you, period, no matter what happens. And I remember the day that I was praying for my dad and submitting myself to God and our families. Just your will be done in my family. And all of a sudden pain that I had in my life for years just went oh, that just gave me chills just now because I remember the moment and I was set free chains fell to the ground never to be picked up again oh my gosh what a revelation what an amazing thing that happened and I, I learned man I learned how to pray the way God taught us to pray I learned how to pray the way uh, uh, Paul and Silas prayed just praise God. We sing the songs. I'll praise you in this storm. We sing the songs. Mercy Me's got a great, great, great new song. Um, even if it, even if, is it called even if? Anyway, um, I love you. I stand on this stage night after night reminding, the, reminding the broken it'll be all right. But tonight I just can't. I don't have the strength. I will trust you to do this for me. But even if you don't, I trust 
Like, that's putting trust in God. Not just throwing darts, expecting to do what we want him to do. That's putting trust in God. There's, we're getting low on time, but uh, if you just, well, Luke 6. Put the next one up there really quick. Luke 6. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eyes and pay no attention to the plank in yours? <laughs> like, God it even calls us hypocrites. How can you say that to this guy or this girl or this person at work or your wife or your husband? How can you say that to him? Let me, let me take the speck out of, take, God, get them. Make them see when you yourself have the biggest plank in your own eye. It's a, you hypocrite? Oh, Jesus just called. Well, he, he's talking to them. Whew. He's not talking to me. If you can be honest with yourself, don't raise your hand. But how many of you can honestly say at least one time in your life, he was talking to me? You don't have to raise your hand. Because the next question is, how many of you can say it right now this morning? Yeah, that's me. I do that. Yeah. I mean, this message was first for me. Uh, we got to stop praying for people to change and looking outward like everything else needs to change but you. Sometimes we're the ones that need to change. And what, the only change that we need to make is worshiping God and spending time with God. That will break your chain. It doesn't have to be complicated. It's just come to me. Lay down your life. Deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow me. And you actually have to do it. You actually have to spend time with him. You know when they prayed in the upper room and, and the earth changed? They went up in the upper room and they prayed for about 10 minutes and then the world changed. Did they pray for 10 minutes? How long did they pray? Days. They prayed for days. Now, does that mean that they prayed nonstop for days and they didn't get up and go to work? I don't know what that means. Who cares? They entered into a place of prayer and worship for days upon days upon days. They didn't just pray. They entered into prayer. There's a difference. Most of us pray. But how many times do we enter into prayer and you stay there for a minute? A minute means a long time. You stay there for a while, or do we just pray? I got to pray for this, I got to pray for this guy. I'm guilty of it. There's people in my church that, can you pray for me for this? Can you pray for me for this? Can you pray for me for this? And I got a whole bunch of prayer lists that are going on, so I just rattle them up. Boom, boom, da, 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 da. Got my prayers in, boom, let's go. I got to sand down some tables at the church. Let's do it, right? I didn't spend any time in prayer, and how much does that help me? God doesn't want you to, to open up the Bible looking for something to make a, something change. He, how many times, when's the last time you opened this up because you wanted to learn more about Jesus? I'm not looking for something except to know you better. That's when the chains fall off, you guys. If you have chains on you and it has been a while and they're still on you and you've come to the altar and you've laid them down but there's still something there, I take it to the next level. You have to enter into prayer. And worship just you and God. Work on your heart and your relationship with God. It's not hard, but it does take time. And it does take some sacrifice. Taking time out is sacrifice. Jesus wants a relationship with you. You have to actually do this. James says that, that if, if we don't do it, you can't just be hearers of the word. You will be doers of the word. And if you are just hearers and not doers, you're deceived you walk away thinking you'd fire these darts, bam, bam, bam. Yeah, you walk away deceived going, oh, man, my relationship with God is great. You have no relationship with God. You just took scriptures and fired them off, but you didn't spend time with him and worship and let your heart be set free and pray for something other than the immediate problem that you have that's your fleshly emotional problem anyway. It really does make a difference when you just let all that stuff go and just, God, I'm here. Your will be done and the chains, the chains will lift. Anytime if somebody's struggling with something, they're struggling with something, you know, addiction or something pretty heavy on their life or whatever, you can really, don't have to go any further than this in counseling. Tell me about your prayer life. And then just shut up and listen. A hundred times out of a hundred, they don't have one. 
Tell me about your problem. You're struggling? You're struggling with uh, meth addiction. You're struggling with uh, alcoholism. You're struggling with, you know, some, some pretty big bondages. But you can filter it all the way down to anything. You know, you're struggling with gossip. I mean, you're struggling with that, whatever it is. With profanity, you cuss, and you really want to try to stop, and you're struggling with whatever. Whatever you're struggling with, you know? I, all I have to say is, if you, you're coming to me, I'm struggling with this, help me. Tell me about your prayer life. There's no one ever that says, I spend 30 minutes in prayer every morning listening to worship music and actually praying to God and getting to know Him, but I can't kick this heroin addiction. <laughs> that, you don't hear that. You don't hear that. People that have a great prayer life have been set free from stuff. So if you still haven't been set free from stuff, I ask you the same question. Tell me about your prayer life. Tell me about your prayer life. Or do you just grab it when you need it? Throw darts when you... That'll, that'll apply here, that'll apply here, but you missed, you're not working on you. Boy, the devil just is brilliant. That's a brilliant plan to make us walk away going, I did pretty good today. I prayed a lot. But you didn't pray for you and your relationship with the Lord. The amount of time that you spend with God reflects your commitment to God. You spend this much time in prayer, it, your commitment is about this big. If God is tugging on your heart and you've got some chains, you're no longer wanting to just take scripture and throw darts at the enemy, but you want God to work on you. God, here I am. Your will be done not mine. If that's you and you're ready to lay down your way, I want you to make your way up to this altar right now. Make your way up to the front of this stage. If you've never accepted Christ, you've never done that before, and you're sick of living the way that you've lived, you want to make Him Lord of your life, if you've never accepted Christ, come forward right now. Okay. Alright. Father God, you see all of our hearts. You see all the hearts of the folks that responded to you. We're all standing in one accord supporting these, these folks right here in their decision. Father God, even the ones that didn't come forward, we could all use an extra strengthening. Father God, your grace is amazing. No matter how many times we mess up or do it wrong, your grace is always sufficient. We break our chains and they are no more. Bind our chains in the heavenlies. Father God, so they stand no chance in the earthlies. Father God, in Jesus' name, all that that encompasses, we say you are Lord of our lives. If you came forward today, just, just repeat this. Father, you're the Lord of my life. My heart is yours. My eyes are on you. I wash my hands of this situation. I give it to you. I lay the chain down. Please break it off me. Never to be picked up again. I trust you. Your will be done, not mine. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, 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 amen.